Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to the base cabinet desk part two. If you did not catch the first video, go ahead and click this card right here because it is a doozy. To get you caught up, I have painted all the cabinets a flat white with my Fuji sprayer, but I did not get footage of that because that's what I do. I tend to forget things. But anyway, but you know, watching somebody paint is about as boring as watching paint dry. So after all the paint dried, I am now reassembling all the drawer slots. So here's your first pro tip. If you're going to paint something in a project, paint that first before you install any hardware. And I'm going to move on to reattaching the side rails to the drawers. All the holes pretty much line up the same, so this didn't take that much time. A quick note, don't use sanded plywood for drawer boxes because it splits even after it's sealed. I would use a pure bond half inch plywood or a higher end furniture grade plywood or even hardwood for your drawer boxes. Next, I'm going to reattach the drawer fronts to the drawer boxes using the existing drawer handle holes. This actually went pretty smoothly. Uh, there was a couple of them that I had to readjust, but it wasn't that bad. Uh, a pro tip here is to label the drawer fronts with the coinciding drawer box that it's attached to. That will make your life a lot easier and quicker. Now it's time to move on to installation. So I took all these bad boys upstairs and then used a furniture dolly to move the cabinets into the office space. I first marked the center of the room and then I marked back 20 inches because I want a 40 inch opening in the center of the desk. Then we're going to butt up the cabinet to that mark and then we're going to secure the cabinets to the wall using two and a quarter inch pocket hole screws into the studs. Now we're going to install the next cabinet and this one is only going to get one screw into the studs because there's only one stud available. And we're going to move on to our first bonehead mistake of the day. As you notice, this cabinet has a toe kick on the back of it. Somebody measured the toe kick at three inches instead of four inches. I'm not going to name any names. <coughs> JP. So I had to get a chisel and a hammer and we're going to notch out a one inch section into the base molding. This was probably a dumb idea, but it worked well and you know, probably gonna have to replace that molding when we move out, but whatever. So after cleaning up all the excessive debris, I go ahead and place the cabinets and then we're going to fasten it to these studs like before. On to the last cabinet. I didn't show this before, but I actually fastened the cabinets to each other using one and a quarter inch pocket hole screws in the sides. This is going to tie everything together nicely and I'm also going to fasten the last cabinet into the studs. Sometimes when you level the cabinets, the drawer fronts can be off a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and put in all the drawers and make sure everything is kosher. Fortunately, everything was good and I didn't have to make any adjustments. This last drawer was a little tight, so it doesn't slide very well. Next, I'm gonna take a one and a quarter inch spade bit and drill some holes in the side of the cabinets. These are going to be the holes that I use to push the cables through. And then I'm gonna take a vacuum and clean up my mess. Yeah, this vacuum really sucks. I took a one by four piece of poplar and cut it down to size and then drilled some pocket holes into it. So once I had it level, I then screwed it into the studs 
and then screwed the pocket holes into the sides of the cabinets. Next is a fun part. We took a trailer to a place called Southeastern Salvage and picked up a Formica countertop. These countertops are very durable and they're very easily clean. So I had to trim off some of the ends to get to the 11 feet that I needed. These countertops have a little lip on the back of them. So I'm going to glue and attach some strips of half inch plywood so it gives a little bit extra support on the back. And here is my roommate, Randy. Everybody say hi, Randy. So Randy helped me move the countertop into place. We actually had to move this through the window because it's very long and very wide and it was almost impossible to get it down the hallway. So once we shimmied it through the window, we put it into place. I'd also like to take this time to let you know that we do have a new merch store with a lot of new merchandise. If you would like to help support the channel, go to the link in the description and pick you up some cool t-shirts. We also have face masks too. And now on to the final steps. I'm going to attach the countertop first to the support cleat in the middle. And then we are going to drive in some pocket hole screws in the top stretchers of each cabinet. Now on to some final touches. I'm gonna take a two inch Forstner bit and we're gonna cut a grommet into the center of the desk to accommodate the wires for the monitors and the peripherals. And that thing makes a big mess, but this vacuum still sucks. And then I'm going to attach a power strip under the center of the desk right into the cleat support. This is going to power most of the computer equipment. And then we're going to put all the peripherals back onto the desk, including my obnoxiously unnecessary large monitors. But hey, that's why I built the desk in the first place to accommodate all this crap. I want to thank everybody for watching part two of this desk build. This was an incredibly fun build. It took a long time, which was basically my fault, but whatever. Anyway, but if you like this video, please hammer that like button and share with your friends, families, and coworkers. Also, if you think I've deserved it, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and I got a couple more videos coming up in the future. Cheers guys, thank you.